Welcome to the RF Elements Analysis Podcast. I'm Caleb, and with always, we've got Tassos over there, right over there. So, hi, Tassos. Hi, Tassos. <laughs> so, here for another episode. Really excited. We got Johnny Anelian from Faster Cajun Network. So, oh, yeah. a lot of y'all know him. Uh, he's been around a while, a little bit infamous. Uh, if you're on Facebook, you've seen him around. Well, at least when he's not been banned. So, anyways, <laughs> you see him around occasionally, but uh, we're, we're super excited about this conversation. Real quick, before we jump into it, toss us, give the good people out there their call to action. Absolutely. Don't forget to like, listen, or subscribe to our channel right here on YouTube or anywhere you download your audio podcast like Apple, Google, or Spotify. <laughs> All right, all right. Well, let's go ahead and hop to it. Johnny, man, we really appreciate you being here. We've been looking forward to this. Uh, we got our editors uh, with the, the beat buttons ready, so we're ready to get this done, man. So we appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today, and uh, super excited to hear what you got to say. Uh, hey, uh, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, uh, for, for, for those that don't know, uh, Everybody calls me Johnny O. Uh, we run a company called Faster Cajun uh, Networks out of Southwest Louisiana. Uh, we we are uh, a, a fixed wireless access company uh, that that's moving into doing some fiber and whatnot. But uh, uh, we we've we've, we've yeah. built out a pretty extensive uh, tower infrastructure uh, in this area. Uh, we, we do a lot. Uh, you know, we're 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 probably eighty percent residential, twenty percent commercial. Uh, that that percentage, uh, you know, is flipping as as time goes on. Uh, we've 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 worked really hard to become you know the pr premier provider in our in our coverage area, uh, competing against AT and T, uh, Cox, uh, Suddenlink, uh, Vive, uh, you know, uh, all all of the other uh, incumbent providers. Um, pretty proud of uh, you know where 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 we started and uh, where we've come in four years. And, uh, you know, our, 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 our growth, uh, is, you know, uh, set on track to, uh, continue, uh, at, at a nice steady rate. Uh, I guess our biggest problem, you know, is keeping up with the demand. Uh, so, uh, that, that's a little bit about us. Okay. So like, how did you get into this industry? Sort of, where did you come from? Uh, from lands unknown, as we all know, but uh, you know, <laughs> don't there's some time I came from my mama. Don't start from there. <laughs> <laughs> Fast forward a little bit. <laughs> but like the fixed wireless industry, like you know, how did you get your start into this, and you know, where 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 were those steps that brought you to where you are now? I, uh, I how far back you want to go? Uh, uh, <laughs> far back I, as you want to go, man. We we got time. <laughs> Uh, you can leave out the blocks. The government had you tied up. Don't worry about that. Uh, so. Yeah. They, uh, hang on. Let me check the bushes. They, uh, <laughs> but, uh, I, I, either way, I, I grew up with a father that was a, uh, uh, a, a senior radar t technician in the air force, uh, during the sixties. Uh, dad was, uh, always into, uh, ham radio, uh, CD radio. So, you know, a, 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 as a child, uh, you know, I, I've been around uh, wireless and, and learning about propagation and communication. And that, that's really uh, where my interest started, you know, a, a, as far as radio goes. Uh, right out of high school, I went to work and uh, managed uh, radio shacks uh, in, in, uh, around the Houston area. Um, moved, uh, moved into, uh, you know, the IT uh, sector from there. Uh, from 95 through 2001, uh, I worked in the fiber optic uh, industry, building out long all fiber networks uh, around the country uh, as a contractor for uh, Nortel and Fujitsu North America. After 9-11 happened, uh, you know, the, the telecom industry, uh, the bubble uh, where every, you know, these companies actually had to make money, uh, it, it completely burst, uh, leaving hundreds of thousands of us uh, out of work. Um, my wife and I decided to relocate back to Louisiana. At the time, uh, AT&T had not even uh, rolled out residential DSL uh, in our area. And we started out with uh, a, a, a small, which to us at the time seemed uh, rather significant, you know, a $10,000 uh, investment, uh, which, which bought us uh, our first uh, tower, which was... Uh, uh, an old CB tower that we installed some ingenious uh, access points on. <laughs> CB3, baby. 
Uh, yeah, CB threes. Uh, you know, we 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 had uh, NEMA four enclosures, uh, external antennas. I mean, we 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 built out the CP. You know, with all the the various parts. Uh, so, so we actually were the first high speed provider, you know, for residential services in this area. Uh, we ran that company until 2009. And when we started, we had two kids in 2009, we had six. So <laughs> you had some free time at some point in the business. So. <laughs> you were, you were uh, busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we were very busy. Even though the business uh, was doing well uh, financially, uh, my wife and I, you know, with our our, our family expenses, uh, uh, I decided that I'd go back into the corporate world. And so we uh, shut down uh, that wireless company. And uh, I spent the last number of years up until the end of 2018, you know, in, in the private sector, uh, you know, managing uh, for, you know, large uh, corporations. Uh, their, their ITs and uh, you know uh, wireless deployments in their warehouses and uh, things like that. So mm-hmm. we we started a uh, faster cage and uh, at the end of uh, 2018 uh, built our first towers and uh, did our first uh, residential install. You know in uh, May of 2019. So we're 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 still a very young company uh, with with where we're at and uh, you know looking forward to the to, to the future. Uh, there's there's a lot of uh, evolution that's taking place and constantly taking place with uh, uh, you know your 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 points multi point systems uh, their capabilities, but also on the antenna side uh, you've got you know some real innovation from companies uh, that's driven the growth that uh, the industry has uh, really uh, been able to appreciate and uh, hop on board with uh, that. Uh, allows uh, companies like ours to, to continue growth in areas where our density is uh, becoming, uh, you know, uh, an issue with noise. Uh, so they, uh, you know, we we, we uh, jumped on board with uh, RF elements uh, uh, mm-hmm. er, early on, and uh, we, we haven't regretted it. We've got uh, we're, we're mostly a cambium shop. Uh, we do have some uh, legacy towers from a. Uh, uh, a recent uh, acquisition, uh, you know, that that does have ubiquity, uh, but we've uh, ripped into place most uh, with Cambium uh, just due to the capabilities, uh, you know, of the EPMP 3000 platform uh, as opposed to the, you know, the Prism radios. That's where we are. Well, cool. I mean, this is kind of a different view. You know, we've done, we've had several guests that have been doing this a long time and sort of started in those wild west days like you did, you know, back <laughs> yeah. 01, 02 and so, but you know, I don't think we've talked to anyone that, that had a, a, a gap, you know, you're talking about a 10 year gap between what you were doing then and then what you're doing now. So, I mean, I got to imagine, you know, we're aware of the changes that have happened, but when you've been following it the whole time, I mean, you, you get, you know, kind of, kind of numb to it. Numb's not the right word, but you know, you can see it, you know, move evolutionary. Whereas when you came back in, I got to imagine it was like, Hey, this is a little bit different than we used to do it back in the day for sure. Oh, it was so. a lot different. Uh, definitely. <laughs> it, it was, it, yeah. You're, you're hundred percent right. You mean this radio comes with POE and like, yeah. you just plug some stuff in. This is amazing. <laughs> no assembly required. Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, out the box uh, on the tower or on the customer's house. Uh, it, it, it was a uh, night and day difference. Uh, Shit, even the price. Yeah, you know we uh, we're, we're still pulling down uh, some of our original uh, equipment from the early two thousands. You know, at these customers' places, whether it's CB threes in an enclosure or or the wow. the, the state of the art transios that were one hundred and twenty dollars <laughs> a radio. You know, out of the box. Uh, yeah, you know. We, we, we've gone to some customer locations. This stuff's still powered up, you know, 15 years later, uh, it, it's unreal, you know, but, uh, there's, there's going to be CB threes out there that outlast the cockroaches. Like when the nukes <laughs> hit, like yeah. they are yeah. slow, but I mean, they were, they were little beasts for sure. Yeah. Well, those, those yeah. radios were, uh, much more hardy too, with the, with the lower modulation rates and stuff, they weren't so sensitive to static and all the other things like these, you know, higher end radios are these days. So yeah, it's, it's not surprising to see it still out there to be quite honest, yeah. you know? Yeah. I mean the radio tech and then like in terms of like billing systems, automation, you know, are you guys using a lot of that sort of stuff? Or are you doing everything manually that you kind of spun up? 
Uh, no, we uh, so so we we we're, we're as far as our billing mill billing system, uh, we 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 we're tied in with Sonor and PowerCode. Uh, at this point, uh, uh, you know, all our billing is is automated, as opposed to years past where I mean, it was you sent a manual invoice. You know, a, a person printed them, uh, a person stuffed the envelopes, uh, you know, mailed them out, then uh, had to wait for the checks to come in. And then you know, uh, th- th- there was no way to send a quick uh, email reminder back then. Uh, yeah. You know, that, there was, but it would it, it would have had to have been a, a manual process. Uh, but uh, so uh, our, our billing system's 100 percent automated. Uh, we we. As a company, we do not uh, accept uh, paper uh, payments. And uh, I I would say probably 99.5% of our customer base, uh, you know, it's through e-check or or credit card. So they, uh, yeah, there's that. Uh, There's very little time uh, spent on billing, which is something that I didn't want us to have to focus on. I did not want to have to spend employee uh, payroll hours, you know, on, on, something so simple as somebody paying their bill. Um, yeah. I, I, I see a lot of mixed reviews and uh, feedback from people that are constantly having to chase money. And I don't know if we're just blessed with a uh, really responsible and uh, timely uh, customer base or if uh, the way we have it set up with the, uh, the, the, the payment due dates and uh, the, the email reminders, but uh you know that 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 that's where we are with that. Uh, no complaints at all. Sorry, you mentioned you mentioned sonar and power code. So you're running both. Why why is that? Or what's it's? I usually hear it's one or the other, right? Well, one of one of the uh, the, the, the the company that we recently uh, acquired was uh, a power code shop. Gotcha. Uh, we we have a fa- faster cage inside. You know, all, all of the new network, uh, and and we're slowly moving over. Uh, the, the power code customers into Sonar. But at, at this point, we're kind of at a standstill. We, we're not sure which is the right direction to go. Um, we, we were really excited about Sonar and we jumped on, a, you know, with them early. And, uh, you know, with whatever, I mean, power code uh, recently has come back uh, with a fresh and uh, excitement and uh, eagerness. Um, so we, we, we've had great luck with both. Uh, so we're, we're, we're really not sure uh, where we're going to end up as far as the billing system. Uh, you know, you have, you've got some options. Uh, you know, a newcomer uh, to, to the industry is uh, this. Uh, th- th- there's, there's a lot of options and flexibility, uh, you know, there. Um, majority of our, 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 our network is handled through Sonar, but we use power code for all of our schedule. Mm. It's uh, we. There, there's there's pros and cons uh, for both, and, and and fortunately, you know, we we have both because uh, we'll use one for this and and one for that. Uh, it's a bit of a pain uh, having two uh, billing platforms, but you know, we've made it work. Cool, cool, cool. So the billing system advancements has really helped. I'm sure uh, system monitoring, you know, bandwidth management, giving bandwidth. I got to imagine your your <laughs> transport options were were way easier to sort through now than what it was back in the day, for sure. I mean, you came from that space. I'm sure that helped sort of understand what it took to get it done in the beginning. But, you know, like with where you are in your location and stuff, do you have a lot of transport options? Are you pretty limited? Your diversity options good? I'm always curious about that because, you know, one guy's like you know, getting the bandwidth in is one of their biggest problems, and others are like, no, I got 17 providers to pick from. So <laughs> what's it look like down there? Yeah, no. So we, we have uh, one major provider that uh, we, 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 we do have a diverse path from 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 our upstream uh, it comes from uh, two directions. But actually where those two directions, they ride the same dark fiber into our town uh, that's owned by another company. So we have a, a, an unprotected path of nine miles, which is highly unlikely. Uh, we, we haven't experienced an event in four years. But eventually, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> someone's going to cut the fiber. <laughs> hey, e- e- eventually, uh, you know, we'll, we'll experience uh, an outage. Uh, we're, we're, we're very fortunate because uh, we, we, we use Cantera as our upstream. Uh, they, they are uh, a small company. 
in comparison to AT and T or you know Level Three or uh, CenturyLink, when you call into the knock within the second ring, somebody is answering the phone. That person yeah. is actually the, the person that's going to take care of you and and feed you information instantly. Uh, restoral times are very quick. We in, in four years we've only had one issue, and that was during uh, uh, the aftermath of uh, Hurricane Laura, where the uh, the, the data center uh, just the west of us uh, lost all three of their backup generators. <laughs> and uh, so we were down for about four hours. Uh, you know, you, 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 they, they had to find and uh, get, you know, some 500 kilowatt uh, generators uh, in. And so that wasn't an easy task. But definitely, uh, 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 originally, uh, you know, back in the, the early 2000s, we had T1s. And then we had two bonded T1s, then four bonded T1s, and then <laughs> six bonded T1s. Uh, you know, there, there, there were no fiber options. So we, we, we can get transport, you know, to, to anywhere from here. But compared to guys that, that are in a metro area where, you know, bandwidth is dirt cheap, uh, you know, we, we, we pay a premium for, for what we have here. But, uh, you know, we, we've got multiple 10 gig connections into our, our network uh, which uh, over the next year will will increase into you know forty gig uh, you know as we grow you know to, to support the forward growth. Uh, fortunately, when you're buying bandwidth uh, as you scale, you know you, you're able to enjoy the the economy of scale uh, mm-hmm. as to starting out with your first gig connection. Uh, bandwidth becomes so cheap uh, once you get into your 10, 25, you know forty uh, gig connections uh, as opposed to. That guy that's in BFE that's paying eighteen hundred twenty four hundred dollars for you know a, a one gig connection you know on a five year term with build out cost and mm-hmm. so they uh, no de- definitely a lot more options uh, you know today uh, in, in, in 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 bandwidth availability. Well, that's cool. That's cool. So, you know, everyone's region's a little bit different, you know, and you talk to 20 different WISPs and they've got 20 different regional issues they may deal with. A lot of it's weather, location, you know, I can't imagine you've got a lot of issues with snow down there. Uh, No mountaintop (laughs) issues, you know, no snow cats or helicopter rides to get up to your pops and stuff. Um, I'm sure you got an anthill there every now and then. But, um, you know, obviously with your location, the, the big one is the hurricanes that you guys have got to deal with. So um, we talked about the hurricane stuff when we talked to Spencer a bit. We had a good chat about that. So one thing we definitely wanted to talk to you about is, you know, dealing with the the hurricanes, the the widespread damage. What have you learned as an operator that has helped you? What did you learn that you flubbed up? You know, just what, you know, those of that might be uh, in those areas, whether it be the part of the Gulf. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, we run into it here. I'm outside of Charlotte. I mean, every now and then we'll get one that blows through and it's only a tropical storm at that point. But I mean, you know, we're also not built for the infrastructure. So we've had some issues too. So what have you learned? Um, what, what do you think others out there in these areas should really know in dealing with these kinds of issues? I, I've grown uh, throughout my life uh, with uh, preparedness for these hurricanes that hit, you know, every three to five to seven years, uh, we, we will get some major storms. Uh, we, we will be out of power two to four weeks. Uh, so go, going into Hurricane Laura, it was day four prior to the storm. I've seen the writing on the wall. Didn't have a single backup generator. <laughs> didn't have fuel. <laughs> didn't have extension cords. Uh, like, what the hell are we going to do? Uh, everybody's buying everything up in the area. Uh, fortunately, I, 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 I had a, a good friend, uh, Gary Gidry uh, Sr., that was working in uh, Wisconsin and Illinois area that was coming down a couple of days before the storm. So, I had him, he stopped off, you know, at four or five different tractor supplies and, and, and showed up, you know, with generators. Uh, it, so we, we kind of knew what was coming. We, we were preparing. We were hoping for the best. Uh, when the storms hit, uh, we, we actually, my wife wanted to kill us because uh, me and a couple of my boys, we were firing up generators during the middle of the hurricane, you know, 100, 120 mile an hour uh, sustained winds. Uh, 
all in all, when when we woke up uh, out after the storm, eighty uh, percent of our, our network was, was still online uh, oh, from wow. the sites that we had uh, rolled out generators uh, to. Now we had piss poor uh, backhauls uh, from from antennas turning. Uh, we had sectors that were turned. Uh, 99% of our customer base was offline, you know, they, uh, but I knew that, you know, in our area, the people that left probably 50, 60% of our customer base already had generators and they were going to come online as soon as they got back to the house in the next day or so. Uh, so we, 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 we went ahead and we had probably during hurricane Laura, 90, 95 uh, percent network restoration, you know, within the first 18, 24 hours uh, post the storm. We knew as a company and, and we sacrificed uh, a, a lot of uh, preparation at our homes, uh, you know, our employees. Uh, we, we, we kind of knew that we would be uh, a main source of information and communication, you know, in these areas. Uh, Phone lines were down, cable was down, DSL providers were down. Uh, you know, everybody was down except for us. Uh, you know, in the majority of these areas, uh, uh, most of uh, these companies uh, have aerial uh, cable and fiber. Uh, very little of it's in the ground. And uh, Tassos uh, visited. I mean, I have uh, pictures. You you driving down the road, and out of a hundred telephone poles. 94 of them are gone. They're all laid yeah. over. Uh, you know, that's that that includes all the infrastructure and whatnot. Our, our town was spared major damage, but just 10 miles, 15 miles to, to the west of us. I mean, it, it was just completely devastated. Uh, I believe we were 17 or 18 days for Hurricane Laura uh, out of power. Uh, so logistics uh, was a nightmare with fuel. Uh, uh, you know, in, 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 in the initial uh, week, uh, we were having to drive our, our vans out of the area 40, 60 miles, you know, in that first week to fill up with gas and fill up uh, gas cans and uh, totes. But uh, we, we managed. Um, we got a lot better at it quick because. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God, because the year uh, after. You know, we 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 we. Uh, we had uh, almost 400 on-site service calls that we went through, uh, scheduled, and uh, did in the first 30 days at Post Laura. Uh, turned antennas, uh, hunting for antennas. Uh, carports were gone, <laughs> roofs were gone, houses were gone. Uh, you know, a, a lot of these people were rolling in with campers that we were setting up poles and whatnot to get them back online. So we did a lot of the work, uh, rehardening. Uh, you know, some of our installs, uh, we, we, we learned the, the weak points and whatnot. So the, I, I guess the first step in preparedness for a hurricane is make sure your installations are very hardy and, and done properly and uh, overkill. Uh, go up a, a, an extra size on your lag bolts. Put in five lag bolts in a, a JR mount versus two where I, I see a lot of people in the country, they'll put one at the top, one at the bottom, and then they bottom. call it good. <laughs> yeah so one in each but, corner uh, <laughs> yeah they uh we 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 uh tassos uh richard straight matter uh spencer uh pals aaron rodriguez uh laren metz uh micah desitel uh that there was uh uh isb supplies was absolutely instrumental uh, Tassos and Richard rolled in here on uh, day two post the storm, but we had uh, they they came with a trailer uh, full of uh, equipment, gear, tower sections, anything that we needed. Uh, the, these guys picked up and and and, and rolled into us. Uh, brought food, brought you know a, a, a lot of uh, positive uh, vibes and uh, encouragement. Uh, they, they, they were key and instrumental into getting through that, uh, th this storm without the outside help, you know, we were really short on equipment, uh, with, without the outside help of, uh, you know, RF elements, uh, uh, ISP supplies, uh, uh, CTI, 
uh, it, we, we, we very possibly could have failed as a company. Um, I believe that was really the, uh, the big start and push of at least more than I'd ever seen uh, of WISC coming in and helping each other. Uh, since then, uh, we, we've kind of uh, grown out the brother brotherhood, and we've anytime anybody is in a bind anywhere, I believe. Uh, who was it in Texas uh, shortly after that? They they had sabotage on one of their towers. Oh, that's uh, yeah, uh, Brandon. He was on the show exactly. Yep. Right. Yeah. He, he, so what we learned here really. Uh, translated into uh you know helping him out um uh, you know after that uh pre preparedness is you know if, if i need seven generators and we're going into a storm and i have nine i mean I pi i'm picking up the phone and i'm letting uh our, our our neighbor wisp you know people that may be impacted as well know that hey this is what i have what do you have uh, a, a lot of us are communicating on a regular basis now, uh, even during uh, just lightning strikes, which uh, really plague our areas. Uh, <laughs> we've got some towers that are extensively grounded. We've got some towers that <laughs> are not grounded. We've got some towers that are isolated. There is really no solid definitive answer of how to prevent against lightning damage. So that's something that, you know, we, 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 uh, uh, we, we deal with here, but uh, to be prepared, uh, uh, most of us uh, has gotten really good at stocking the shelves uh, 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 ahead, uh, you know, to where we can weather these events or whatnot. We reach out to each other, uh, provide climbers, uh, provide help, you know, whatever. So, yeah, uh, be, being prepared is uh, very important in our neck of the woods. Uh, that that year, we uh, sustained a, a direct hit from uh, Hurricane Laura. Uh, we had uh, Hurricane Delta. We had another hurricane that glanced us, and then we got, had a, a tropical storm. So we had four named storms that year, and uh, yeah. you know, all yeah. all within a period of uh, four and a half to five months. Uh, we're still here, <laughs> yeah, but we wouldn't be. Uh, Can't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, I, I think uh, Tassos, and, uh, Tassos and Richard, I think, stayed a couple extra days. I think they were a little concerned at me whenever I, I, I went and pulled up a lawn chair, you know, to, to stare at the side of the house and have a conversation with uh, uh, the ship lap uh, siding, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they uh when, when they showed up I, I i was literally in shock you know uh what uh, in the aftermath for for a few days so now, that was a, a great experience eye-opening experience for me too to uh see not only how the community comes together but what it takes to kind of you know just really strap on your boots and just knock the shit out i mean you your kids your family uh, your community really pulled it together and uh, did some amazing, amazing things. And uh, uh, yeah, like I said, it was great to be part of it. And, you know, we're always here for the next one when it comes because we know what's going to happen. And we hope that we can grow this, again, brotherhood of wisps that we have here on the uh, the Gulf Coast uh, to chip in and, and, and help out even more and even beyond. Because, again, I mean, a lot of the things that you've learned uh, and that you're sharing now with uh, other wisps and stuff like that, you know, do kind of translate to the other natural disasters that are out there. You know, on the West Coast, we have huge wildfires, right? You know, here in the central U.S., we have tornadoes, you know, and then you have blizzards and all sorts of other things that happen around the country. So I think a, a lot of that, you know, kind of preparedness uh, is, you know, somewhat translatable to those different disasters and what you can do to kind of prepare. And, and really the key I've learned two things. A is communicate with your fellow wisps, right? You know, build yourself a, a group of brothers and sisters that uh, will you can lean on when it happens, you know. And and fuel, <laughs> really, it's been <laughs> fuel has been the thing, you know, of, of all the things. Fuel is always uh, the Achilles heel, and we learned that with Aaron, right? Uh, when that uh, uh, hurricane came through, Nolo is the same thing. It's just like, damn it, you know, we need to get. A fuel truck or something like that because that uh, solves a lot of the problems 
Well, we 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 rolled in many totes. Yeah, you know no. the, the, that's the, dangerous. The, though. <laughs> the, 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 well, you know, but uh, you know, we 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 dealt with uh, Hurricane Laura with fifty gas cans. Correct. You know, yeah. we're, we're like, you know, looking on marketplace. Here, here's these. Uh, thanks to COVID, you had hundreds of totes in the area that had been filled with uh, hand sanitizer, right. and uh, you know, for fifty bucks. Like, you know, 50 bucks for the tote and $100 worth of stuff. And you've got it set up to where you fill it up and, and you can gravity feed out of it. Uh, Aaron was very fortunate because there's no way we could have handled uh, the, the amount of gas cans that it was going to take uh, with, with no fuel in the area, you know, available for, I, I'd say, you know, 96 hours at, at all. But they, uh, yeah, you're right. They fuel, fuel. Lots of fuel. They, uh, you, know, you may need it, you may not. You know, you 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 can uh, you you can burn it in your vans uh, if you don't need it. But uh, exactly, you know, when you need it, you know, you, you driving two three guys out you know, of an area in an evening, they've already worked eighteen hours. Now you're out of fuel for the next day. The generators need fuel. Well, now you got to drive these guys. They, they've got to spend another hour and a half, two and a half hours. You know, go and pick up fuel. So fuel is important uh, in, in our area of the country. You know, so but uh, yeah, no, they. I I, I think Tosses. I think I think the experience uh, not only grew us uh, professionally, but I, I think it taught us a lot uh, personally. You know, on the preparedness side and uh, the, the resilience of uh, people in these communities. Uh, it, uh, you know, in, in these types of situations. We saw some people that I've never even heard speak or do anything in 20 years step up into the limelight. And, and those were the people in the community that were, were dug in and, you know, helping everybody, uh, yeah. you know. So, but, uh, yeah, we, we've we've built quite the brotherhood. And uh, I, I, it, as far as helping us out, uh, each of us as companies, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we've grown uh, together in our relationships as well. Got a kiddie pool full of gas in the back of the truck and some tacos ready to help <laughs> out. So. Lots of tacos. Yeah. Lots of tacos, man. Maybe, maybe we need a disaster recovery taco truck. That's what Now it's for. we're talking. <laughs> now we're talking. Remember, I, ha I have that uh, satellite uplink truck, man. We, we, we can oh. bring that to you. And we've, talk we've talked about it. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, that, that mm -hmm. thing that uh, can sleep four people and mm. have a small kitchen area. Uh, but yeah, that that satellite uplink truck would would be a perfect disaster, you know, Gulf Coast uh, disaster uh, vehicle. Uh, <laughs> See, my primary question is: Does it have AC inside? So it, uh, <laughs> get a little swampy it, down there. It has two for you, uh, Caleb. Yeah. All right, now we're talking. Now we're talking. You're on board now. We're good. I'm we're on good. board now. <laughs> so I'm ready to do this. Uh, yeah, I keep my it, core it, temperatures it, low. Yeah, uh, you know, immediately after the hurricane, uh, it, 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 it's really humid for, for weeks. I mean, everything yeah. is just doused, you know. And so. the mosquitoes are like 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 fox out there. It's crazy. <laughs> They're aggressive yeah. as hell. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, I've never seen such a thing. Yeah, so there, there's like 100 species of uh, mosquitoes. Yeah. They... Uh, but what happens during a hurricane is all those marsh mosquitoes. We we call them the mosquito, the, the, the demon mosquitoes. These things come straight from hell. They have a reddish tint to them, and when they bite you, when they when they sting you, I mean they they literally whelp you. I mean yeah. it, it, it's not like your common mosquitoes. These things are they're mean. You yeah, know? they are. I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> Not a fan at all. <laughs> it does bring up a good point, though. I mean, because you're like, all right, well, the power's out, so we'll get some fuel and whatever else. But, I mean, like the physical toll that takes on people, because you're working long days trying to recover, but it's hot, it's humid, there's no relief, the food is sketched, the bugs are out, and it's just, you know, it's really hard to be able to just get out of that situation, so mm -hmm. physically and mentally. So, yeah. you know, the more that you can be prepared, the more you can you know, be ready for this. I mean, no one's a hundred percent ready, but the more that you can do in advance really saves you a lot of pain down the road for sure. We, we've got an excess of the extension cords, uh, an excess of the uh, small <laughs> generators now, 
Uh, we've got propane generators. I've, I've got a stockpile of uh, 30, 35 uh, propane tanks that I've got enough to get us by without us having to leave the area, you know, for a week. Um, uh, Delta, we were out of power, you know, for, I think, 16 days. You know, the, the, the next storm that, that comes in, you know, we're two weeks. It, it doesn't matter if it's uh, 1971 or 2022. When they come in and repair this infrastructure, they repair it just enough to get customers uh, back power. So you may have had, in a string, you may have had 40 poles that survived. They don't replace those. Those are on the verge of snapping the next time. Next so, time, yeah. you know, yeah, you know, but, uh, yeah, being better prepared, being better prepared, uh, people in tornado areas, uh, I think, uh, or isolating areas, uh, their disasters are a little bit different, uh, a little bit less predictable. You don't know when a, a tornado is going to crop up and rip through your area, but if you live in a tornado area, you should prepare like one's coming tomorrow. Yep. They, uh, if you live in an area where you've got ice storms that's going to collapse trees, uh, telephone poles, uh, power lines, you should prepare like it's going to happen this year. You know, they, uh, and, and I, I think as an industry, you see a lot of people that would just be hesitant to, you know, spend any money on preparation that your customers, I mean, they, they want their internet. <laughs> Yeah, you know, <laughs> but uh, aside from streaming Netflix and, uh, you know, doing uh, Instagram and uh, Facebook and things like that, uh, having the Internet and capabilities where cell, the cellular infrastructure is down, this is where, you know, uh, fixed wireless companies uh, excel. And I'm not talking about fixed wireless on the cellular side, you know, which is being given all the praise in the world, regardless of the the, the, the millions that the WISP industry has serviced and uh, provided for, you know, for, for, for 20 something odd years, you're not going to get crews in to a cellular site until a, a week or so after they send in a team to assess, take pictures. Then they, it goes through the corporate stuff. I mean, it, within a, a week and a half to two weeks, you'll start seeing some repairs on damaged towers or, or cows rolling in, you know, within a week or so. But it, it's really critical to get these communications, you know, the Internet, uh, you know, they can make calls. They, they, they can do everything via the Internet. But without it, you know, uh, it, it's it's uh, it, it would be pretty hard for some of these areas to, to rebound as quickly as they are. Uh, we service uh, a lot of uh, uh, volunteer fire departments, city halls, police departments in our area. So that's why we're out in the middle of the storm roll firing at these generators. We know power is going out, you right. know. So if we go roll 10 generators and two of them die out, I mean, we'll go back in the morning, you know, or, or, or you know, a after the storm passes. But our reputation for how we care for our customer base you know, it was 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 well uh, noticed prior to the hurricanes, and thanks to everybody that came in, and you know our team. I mean, we we've really shined. I mean, we we've built a, a lot of loyalty and in, into our customer base. You know, by being able to get these people back online. That's I think that's something that's overlooked too in the industry, and you know, think about that. You know how. <clears throat> Yeah, how you handle yourself here, you know, can actually help your business, you know, and how people see you, perceive you and, and potential new business that that you can get from government agencies and stuff like that, uh, you know, further down the line, too. Yeah, they uh, you know, you've got uh, the, all, all the counties around the country has got an office, an office now, of, uh, it's called OEP. I'm not sure what it is in other states, but that's what it is here. Office, Office of Emergency Preparedness. Uh, it, it's through either FEMA or Homeland Security. But there's actually a local person on the ground that's uh, coordinating and has uh, access to, you know, rapid access to uh, financial fuel uh, generators, things like that, that, you know, five years ago wasn't available. Yeah. 
us and other West in these areas, you know, you should at least make contact, uh, you know, with these these organiza- government organizations because, uh, you know, they, they may be able to help, uh, in, in, you know, in times like that. So Very cool, man. Tasso's uh, uh, went on a couple of drives with me, and, you know, the, the first few days he saw just the stuff in our town, which, you know, it, it, it was pretty bad in our town. But it was not like, you know, 15 miles west, 20 miles west, 30 miles west, 50 miles west, where they saw 200 mile an hour winds. Tasso's got to witness a train that was four miles long that was laid over on its side. <laughs> Crazy. Well, what really surprised me is like I, I expected to see the, the wood telephone poles crack like, like a toothpicks, no big deal. But the first time you took me down a road and I saw one of those huge concrete poles you know just snap like nothing i was just blown away by that i was like how i mean these things are like foot plus in diameter they're huge some are even bigger just snap like it was nothing i was like holy cow that that blew my mind i was just like wow that's crazy stuff man yeah and then i mean just miles and miles i mean as far as you drive the the the, the entire infrastructure is on the ground you know yeah it's just it, it was crazy. And I think all these like different natural disasters and stuff like, you know, tornadoes, fires and and uh, the other things you have to deal with. I think, you know, the thing about the hurricanes is it's, it's such a wider swath of destruction, right? Where, of course, a tornado can come through and it destroys a lot, but it's kind of localized in a way, you know, and it's path that it goes through where, you know, you know, you don't have, you know, 50 miles of coastline just disappearing, you know, as right. you do in hurricanes. Exactly. So. There's a huge, huge difference in the preparedness for that. But again, it's there's a lot of similarities of just being prepared, knowing the the, the different government agencies who are there to help you. You know, uh, you know, one minute after the storm, so to speak, and and get things going. And then again, you know, having some communications with you know your fellow wisps and people in the area, and and trying to prepare all that stuff. So it's a, a really good checklist uh, of things to to look at and think about uh, for the future. So, yeah, yeah, no, definitely. But, uh, yeah, they, you know, these these other disasters, uh, although it's more focused, it's like you're saying, you know, a tornado. A tornado comes through an area in a path. You know, you've got a couple of miles on each side of it. But, I mean, the the, the destruction of tornado brings. uh, Look look at the companies up in the the Northwest and uh, on on the West Coast. You know, over the last number of years, it's lost all their infrastructure uh, d- due to these fires. Yep. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's really hard to be prepared, you know, for, for stuff like that. But I think these companies are, are learning, you know, as, as time goes on. I mean, you're you're not immune, you know, in, in, in any part of the uh, country. Uh, uh, the, the, the guys in the desert, they're not used to lightning and rain. You know, you get yeah. these uh, the smog soon season that comes in, and they'll end up with 80, 120 uh, mile an hour winds, you know, that come through their area. Well, they're like, man, I live in the desert. What the hell is all this lightning and rain from, you know? <laughs> uh, but uh, so I, I don't think anybody anywhere is immune. I think uh, each region's, uh, you know, got its own challenges uh, with weather and uh, ice and snow. Uh, so they... Uh, I'm, I'm I'm more comfortable with dealing with lightning and uh, rain, and you know the 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 the, the 80, 90 mile an hour uh, thunderstorms than I am with a uh, snow and ice. Uh, my guys wouldn't <laughs> know how to drive on that, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> so long story short, you need fuel, you need extension cords, you need generators. That's that's the the big part for sure. But yeah, the planning for it's so tricky too, because you know. You know the hurricane's coming, but I mean it's also the gamble of do I stop everything I'm doing for the storm that might come through and go into prep mode versus oh yep. you know it looks light we're good we're good and then it turns and it turns not just on you but your whole customer base too because you know if they're all still stuck because it was a light prediction and then they got heavy quick you know your reaction's got to be a lot different where versus people are all out of town and then you know no one they'll be back in a couple of days so it definitely adds a, a fudge factor to it for sure. No, we uh, we weren't sure uh, if, if Laura was coming uh, to us. They, uh, I told the guys uh, that, that were actually uh, a few weeks prior to that, that one that glanced us, 
you know, my guys hated me. I mean, we, we spent <laughs> three days prepping only to have to put everything back up, empty the fuel out the generators, uh, you know, the, the ones that we had. But that's when we learned that we didn't have enough was right mm. prior to uh, Laura. So, no, it, 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 you run the drill and you're going to get better at it. Uh, it it's going to take you a lot less work. Uh, you know, we, we have things staged uh, in our office and it, at a storage facility ready to go. Uh, but v v very little time uh, have to put into it. Uh, we, we've now got fuel totes where we can stockpile a thousand gallons, you know, within a couple of hours, uh, something that we had no capability of before. So, yeah, it's uh, yeah, you run a drill and guess what, man? I promise you, after going through these storms and the amount of work we've had, we will gladly do that go fire drill uh, and, and, and not need uh, <laughs> to have to uh, sure. actually sure. put anything in play, you know. So. That's, that's a very fair point. So I guess in terms of generators, I see this question. People go back and forth, gas versus diesel versus propane. Um, and it's different because, you know, when you're cold conditions, obviously really plays into it. Y'all don't really do it there, but you know, you're, you're, you're diesel gelling up and stuff. So you got to run different fuels. I mean, for, for folks out there that are getting started, they're looking to stock up on these, uh, you know, fuel sources or generators and stuff. I mean, what are your inputs there? Which, what works out best? Do you just try to stick with gas just so you can also fuel your vans and stuff? Or, you know, what are you, where are you at now? What are you thinking about in the future with that? We have dual fuel, but what, what we learned is we want uh, the option of dual fuel. Most of WISP power sites are actually going to pull a load of five amps or less. So these little 22, 24, 2500 uh, watt generators, they're really economical. They'll run for eight to 12 hours on a gallon of gas. But if you hook them up to a, uh, uh, which is a, a, a five gallon propane tank, a, a standard 20 gallon, uh, 20 pound uh, tank, you can run it for 24, 28, 30 hours. Yes, it's a lot more expensive to run them off of propane, but you also don't have to have a guy that's running around eight to 12 hours for these tower sites. Uh, stockpiling propane is easy, easy, it lasts forever. Yeah. Yeah, we, we've got some larger sites now that, you know, we do have uh, these uh, mobile uh, light plants. Uh, we, we, you know, that, that have the diesel uh, engines, generators on them uh, that, that, you know, we have now. Uh, we don't have to go to those, you know, every four or five days uh, and, and 30 gallons will, will, will last, you know, two and a half, three, four or five days, uh, depending on the load. Um, yeah, it, 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 it gasoline, uh, old nasty, uh, stinky gasoline, the, the for, for somebody that needs to do it on a budget, you know, that that's the way to go. Uh, these generators are $500 a piece. Uh, you change the oil, you know, every, every second fill up, every third fill up. Uh, the, 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 there's a big difference. I mean, uh, d diesel is ideal in, in our area because it, it, it's there, there's a surplus of diesel everywhere. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're in farming country, rice country, crawfish country. So we've got a, a number of co-ops. It's got, you know, 10, 20,000 gallons, uh, you know, stockpiled. Uh, if, if, if they run out, you know, you, you go to one of your customers who's a, a farmer and say, hey, man, I need 400 gallons of diesel or whatnot. But <laughs> yeah, it's safer, too. Uh, it, it is safer. Uh, you know, we, we, we were talking about that uh, for Aaron and uh you know, uh, NOLA Broadband in uh, New Orleans. I mean, we're, we're sending guys with uh, 250 gallons of gasoline sloshing around in a tub. <laughs> Scared me, like I said, dude. I'm like, no. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, it's not hot or anything. So, yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully, you have your grounding right on your trailer. Not just gassing off anywhere. Hey, you know, <laughs> hey, Chris Josie, do me a favor. Why don't you drive this freaking uh, fuel bomb? <laughs> Giant yeah. Molotov cocktail. Hey, 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 Chris Scott. Hey, do me a favor. Why don't you haul this 300 gallons of uh, gasoline? Uh, man, why those guys are crazy, man. That sloshes around. I don't know, man. But let's <laughs> find out, you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> Guys, we, I feel we, a little woozy. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, we need to get them on the show. We need to get both Chris's on the show and, and, and uh, talk uh, about that stuff. Then you've got uh, Aaron and Tom and, uh, and, and, and Noah that, uh, you know, uh, bless their hearts. You know, they, 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 they're they not as, uh, and this is in no way a, a negative towards them, but you, you've got a lot of guys that work in the whisk industry that may not have experience with gravity feeding from a tank or whatnot, uh, you know, and, and you're going to have spills on the ground. So yeah. in, in that event, yeah, gasoline's the absolute worst choice because, and once that stuff fumes off, gasoline sits on the ground and spreads out. But we, we we're, we're all here, Caleb. You know, we, <laughs> we, we all have all, our got all, all their eyebrows. Yeah, they, they, they still got their eyebrows and hair and nose hairs. You know, <laughs> everybody survived. Yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, that's good stuff. Now, a ton of good information there for sure, and it's something you got to think about. You got to do the maintenance, like you said. A lot of people buy their fancy new generator, they'll fire it up once or twice to play with it, and then surprise, surprise, they got to fire it up when they actually need it, and the damn thing don't work. And it's like, oh, it's amazing. Right. I can't imagine why. So that's that's a story as old as time. Kind of like your batteries. When you actually need the UPS, your batteries are flat or, you know, they won't take a charge and, you know, all, all right. the hits, right? So, you know, a preparedness plan is super important, but all of them have to come with some sort of maintenance. So yeah. this has been the Boy Scout Hour. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, don't don't store your generators with gas in them. You know, yeah. burn it out, empty it out, run it out. You know, because uh, like you said, you know, we 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 had some generators that that had been stored. Well, I mean, you know, we went to fire them up. We we ended up having to build carburetors. Yeah, we turned into some small engine mechanics uh, at, at my home in the evening. Yeah, you, you've got one generator. You, you got it's going to fail. You know, you need two more because the second one just failed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you're not getting a generator technician out after the storm. Uh, Dawson's <laughs> and Rich were there when, 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 when the large generator in our home that, that powers the, the home and uh, the tower site. Uh, I think we had five or six people staying with us uh, at the home. That generator failed at five o'clock in the evening. You know, we, uh, we didn't have full AC and the house did get warm, you know, mm -hmm. but I mean, we, 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 we were comfortable with a smaller generator. My point is, is you're not going to get parts. You're not going to get service, you know, so have a backup to your backup. Yep, definitely. Well, Johnny, uh, that's some super helpful information. Uh, hopefully everyone can learn from this. You know, you got to think about your preparedness. You got to think about the things that can happen, the things you can't think of that will happen. Uh, get fuel. If, if you got to <laughs> learn anything, get a fuel and have a plan to manage it. So, but just think, you know, and you think, Hey, it can't happen to you. I'm far away from the coast or, you know, I don't have to worry about this, but I mean, it could be an earthquake, it could be a fire, it could be anything, you know, it could be a tower getting knocked down uh, like we had with Brandon. I mean, it could be sabotage ice storm, a mm. lot of different ways for things to go sideways. So definitely work on your preparedness, but um yeah this super great info johnny you got any closing words anybody anybody looking for you how they can find you to get some more information or uh like i said we can find you on facebook sometimes when you're when you're not when banned. you're not in facebook jail or bail well, uh, or well, in the doghouse or using yeah. a profile name or 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 <laughs> i'm around I, I want most of the list uh I, I, anybody can uh you know uh uh, reach out to me directly at any time. Uh, more, more, more than willing to help. Uh, you know, as 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 I, I receive help daily from you know industry peers. Uh, cost, cost, I'm constantly reaching out with questions uh, about this or that or whatnot. You know, if if there's anything that I could share with anybody or ever help. I mean, we uh, I, I, not only me as an individual, but it, it, it's part of our culture and our attitude here is is we we are willing to help. So yeah, we, we've received ton of it, tons of it. And, you know, we try to pay it forward as much as possible. So they, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, 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 anyone can reach out to us at any time. Very cool. Toss us. Where can people find us? They can find us all over on social media again, on Facebook and all the wisp talk type groups, Instagram, 
Uh, of course, they can find us on our website, our forum, or simply just by emailing us. You can email me, tassos at rfelements.com or caleb at rfelements.com. But before we go, I have to ask, you know, because, you know, I like cooking and all the other stuff. I don't know if you're teasing me, but is that Occasion Network's cutting board behind you, Johnny? What, 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 what is that? Because that looks like a cutting board. Uh, that, I think that, that, that's a gift from one of my customers. Uh, it's engraved and then filled with epoxy. Yes, it is a faster Cajun Networks cutting board. Oh, my God. I need one of those. I need one of those. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, yeah, we, we, we've, we've got uh, a lot of local talent, uh, you know, in our customer base. And uh, uh, occasionally they'll, they'll bless us with a gift. And uh, that, that was my Christmas present from a customer uh, this past that is totally badass, man. I totally dig it. Totally dig it. Well, awesome. Hey, Johnny, thanks uh, Thanks for joining us. Again, a, a shout out to everybody who's watching this podcast. We want to have uh, more, more people on here. So if you're interested in joining our podcast, please reach out to myself or Caleb and uh, let us know. Uh, we'd love to have you on here and love to have you share your story. And again, kind of be part of this brotherhood we're trying and sisterhood that we're trying to build within the WISP industry, get everybody to know everybody on a personal basis. You know, when you communicate on social media, you know, there's a huge disconnect. I mean, a lot of times the profile picture isn't even the person so you don't really know who these people are and and you know as much as i'm on social media i really hate talking on social media because when you're typing things out and having conversations with people it's it's nothing like when you can see their face you can you know you can see what they're saying and you can have a much more dynamic uh you know conversation based on body language and, and a lot of things so there's a lot of really great people out there and we hope to get uh, a lot a lot more of you wisps on this show uh, sharing your story. So I guess until next time, stay horny, everybody. Thanks. <laughs> you have a good one. See you. Hey, have a good one.